Hi students, welcome to the notes on periodic table organization. Let's get out your science notebook and get started. We'd we'll start with the essential question and right at the top of your page, how are elements organized on the periodic table? Hopefully by the end of these notes, we can start answering this question in a deep way. Let's start with what the periodic table is. The periodic table is an organized table or chart of elements laid out in groups and periods based on multiple chemical and physical properties. This unit is dedicated to explore those multiple chemical and physical properties. The periodic table has many contributors and two that we really give credit to creating and updating the periodic table is Dmitry Mendeleev and Henry Mosley. Mendeleev created a table. He was the first to take a group of elements and organize them by atomic mass, as well as their different properties. And so he was the first to kind of create the chart organization. His periodic table was really neat because he left gaps in his periodic table as predictions for yet to be discovered elements that eventually turned out to be true. Henry Mosley updated the periodic table from atomic mass to atomic number based on his study in the emission spectra of different elements. Now, the periodic table has different parts that we as scientists use to discuss with each other. For example, a group in a periodic table is also called, or a column on a periodic table is, is what we call a group. So on the periodic table, there are 18 groups. A row is typically called a period. And so there are seven periods currently on the periodic table. If you notice that this periodic table is colored, the different colors represent families of elements. Now, speaking of two families, the bottom two are lanthanide and actinides, the bottom two rows. Those actually fit in this spot on the periodic table. So the periodic table should be a lot wider than it actually is, but they've moved those two columns down below the periodic table to make room, mostly to fit it nicely on a smaller sheet of paper. Now, if you notice that there's a black stair step on the periodic table, that's called the metalloid stair step, which I want to talk a little bit more about right now. Now, the metalloid stair step divides the elements based on their metallic properties. And so I'm going to recolor the periodic table based on that. Notice everything on the left side of the stair step are metals. Metals have certain properties. They're shiny, or we would say lustrous. They're conductive, and that means that they can conduct electricity and heat very well through them. They react to copper two chloride and acids very well, and they're malleable, meaning that they bend, they don't really shatter. The elements on the right of the stair step are nonmetals. They're kind of the opposite of metals. They're dull in color, they don't conduct heat or electricity. They don't react with copper two chloride and acids, and they're very brittle. If you hit them, they tend to shatter. Now, on the stair step is the metalloids, it's those orange colored elements on my chart here. Metalloids are special. They kind of have properties of both metals and nonmetals. In fact, one of those important properties is the fact that they're semiconductive. You might recognize silicon in that list. Silicon is an important element used in many electronics. In fact, there's a whole valley called Silicon Valley dedicated to this element that usually deal with companies that are involved in electronics due to their semiconductive properties. Now, a couple notes, there are some exceptions based on placement. Notice hydrogen is a non-metal, even though it's in the metal side. Same thing, aluminum is touching that stair step. So technically it should be a metalloid, but it's not. We know that aluminum is a metal, unlike the other metalloids touching that stair step. Now that's metals, Nonmetals and metalloids are one example of a periodic trend and how the periodic table is organized. But there's a lot of periodic table trends, and we're going to explore many of these trends to come. That leads us to the end of our notes. I would take a moment right now to review and highlight key terms, maybe use a colored pen or a highlighter. Ponder and ask questions. Are you still a little confused? Maybe seek answer to those questions. Hey, even if you're not confused, think of some questions that maybe put yourself in the teacher's shoes that you can ask. Finally, summarize and answer that essential question on your page. Try to use it in a deep way. Create a claim for the essential question. Uh, create some data, some evidence, and then argue that evidence with some of the reasoning that you have. All right, good luck.